indie gaming fans, get ready to get scared away because I'm going to start using some buzzwords like Souls-like and Metroidvania. I'm the ex-hardcore gamer, and today I'm going to talk to you about soldiers. The story of soldiers consists of you fighting in a fantasy land known as Terra Gea. It's a mystical land that they describe as being on the fringes of the afterlife. You have to locate the guardian and move on to the next world. But the problem is, is that you and the other soldiers that you're fighting with never actually died. This paper thin plot is just an excuse to set up the game so that you can get going and start exploring while solving puzzles and fighting enemies. If you go in not expecting much from the plot of the game, you'll be okay while playing playing this. If you want more, then you may be disappointed. Soldiers will in fact start off with a bit of dialogue to get you set up and going, but after that you're going to be playing quite a bit without seeing much more in the ways of plot other than some notes that are thrown about here and there. So let's get this right out of the way. Soldiers knows exactly what type of game that it wants to be. It's a 2D Metroidvania that has Souls-like combat. If that description sounds like something that's not going to appeal to you, then you're probably right. I'm not going to be able to change your mind and neither will this game. The only saving grace is that if you're thinking to yourself that you do enjoy Metroidvania games, but you don't like Souls-like, there is an option to play on an easier difficulty level so that it's not so hard with the combat. While on the topic of difficulty levels, there is also a third option that makes it even harder if that is something that you're looking forward to. You can change the difficulty level at any time while playing, but it will change which achievements that you will be able to unlock. An aspect that I really appreciated while playing Soldiers is that there are three different classes that you can choose from. There's a warrior class that's called the Scout, there's an Archer, and a Mage. Each class has its own play style with unique attacks and abilities. As you progress through the game, you will level up and then you can gain skill points that can be used to unlock even more attacks and abilities. These added moves not only make combat easier and more fun to play, but they also give you new ways to get to areas to explore. Maybe you'll have some bombs to throw to blow up a wall that was previously blocking your way, or you'll have a fire ability to burn some spider webs. As much as I did have fun with the combat in the game, I did extra appreciate the fact that there were still some cool environmental puzzles to help me use my brain a bit more while playing. Most Metroidvania games really only have you worry about what item you need to find to unlock a new area and that's it. While I did just mention that that is something that is present in Soldiers, it's not the only way to move on. Sometimes things may get a bit more complicated. I found myself having to move objects that drop weights onto levers and pulleys, or having to roll a rock in a specific position. I don't want to say too much more because I don't want to spoil anything, but I will say that it was definitely a nice change of pace and I had a lot of fun figuring them out. While exploring the world of soldiers, you will also find multiple shrines that can be used to save your game and act as checkpoints. You can choose to just walk by it and have it be the place that you will resurrect when you die, but you can also choose to take the extra moment to save and that will give you all of your health back and you can quit the game and restart from there from the next time you play. The downside is that every enemy will then respawn. While I did put a lot of hours into Demon's Souls on the PS3 when it first came out, I wouldn't say that I'm all that experienced with the Souls-like genre overall. I bring this up because I know that it's only one game in the whole genre and it's been quite some time since it came out, so I don't want people to think that I'm some sort of expert. The combat in Soldiers will definitely reward you for learning the patterns of your enemies and timings of dodges, but I didn't find that the combat was overly cheap or frustrating. Yes, you'll take quite a bit of damage if you get hit, but then learn from your mistakes and you'll get better. The graphics in Soldiers are self-described as 16-bit, but I don't totally agree with that, but I don't think of it as necessarily a bad thing. I think I personally would describe it as more of a 32-bit style game like it's a long-lost PS1 or Saturn game, but I understand that once people hear 32-bit, they think more about the 3D era of gaming. The developers probably chose to say 16-bit since that immediately gives you the thought of doing nice 2D pixel art and that's what you're going to get here in Soldiers. But unlike the 16-bit era, the sprites are much larger, they're way more fluidly animated, and there's even some cool lighting effects. Everything is mostly 2D, so it's going to be pretty easy to run on 
on most hardware. The minimum requirement that they show for the graphics card is a GTX 1060, and we're coming up at almost three generations past that at this point. The music in Soldiers also harkens back to the 32-bit era where you have that early CD-ROM style music. For those familiar, think back to those old MIDI soundtracks that would play these big epic sounds that were just kind of compressed and sound weird, and while that may sound like I'm talking negatively, it does quite fit the tone of the game. Easy game to highly recommend to fans of the Metroidvania genre. Thank you so much for supporting clickbait free content here at iDream of Indie. We would now like to take a moment to shout out our brave indie warriors and legends that help make this channel possible. At the Indie Warriors tier, we have Bill, Christian Cruz, Adriana Amato, CJR, PSC, Julian Colbus, Jesse, Ray Lynn, Marky Mint, Dave Hart, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle, Strick9, and Chic Geek. At the Indie Legends tier, we have Jen Rose, Larkison, Mitchell Hall, Peach, Skeptism, C Coil, Nathan Moore, Chris Jackson, Mr. W, Blue Francis 14, The Beefarini's Business Cody, Carmen Red, Jace Glover, King of the Hatch, and Ophidian Mind. Thank you so much for everything that you do for independent developers, publishers, and for I Dream of Indie. Head on down to the description box below. Let's defeat the gaming echo chamber and bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.